Hey everyone and welcome. Today I thought we could check out the 1988 horror comedy film Waxwork. Well, let's not wait any longer and light this wick. It's a dark and stormy night. We can hear some struggling coming from within an eerie house. A man's head is shoved into a fireplace as his house is ransacked. Sometime later and we meet Mark and his mother. They're pretty well off and his mother doesn't seem to like poor people too much. She also treats him like a child, not allowing him to have coffee. A couple college girls, China and Sarah, are talking about boys when they come across this weird waxwork that just kind of appeared out of nowhere. A man appears as if out of thin air asking the women if they would like to come in. He invites them in tonight at midnight and says they can bring friends but no more than six. Then he just vanishes again. At the college, Mark meets with the girls and some other friends. He's jealous as China appears to be dating a guy named Jonathan. They ask what's going on tonight and the girls bring up the waxwork, so they decide that's what they're going to do. That night, the group all walk together to the waxwork. They're all a little too chicken to walk up to the house, so Mark takes the lead. The others run up to him, all scared. Two of the friends, Gemma and James, leave because Gemma just has a bad feeling about the whole thing. They're welcomed into the waxwork by a servant named Hans. The group sits in a waiting room when suddenly the door to the waxwork opens. They go inside finding awful real looking wax figures that also seem to be moving. Tony finds an interesting piece and drops his lighter in it like an idiot. He sees no harm in stepping in to retrieve it, but he's transported into some other dimension. He thinks someone drugged his drink again. Tony sees a house and figures why not and heads over. He goes inside and the man talks to him as if he knows him, calling him Jack. The man says it's too late and starts writhing in pain. Tony goes outside and figures he'll play along by grabbing some wood. He returns only to find the man is missing. Just then a large beast comes from another room and goes straight for Tony, who tries to fend it off. A couple hunters come in carrying a rifle and some silver bullets, but they're clumsy as all hell and drop the bullets. The younger man tries distracting the beast with a chair, but it literally brushes it off. The werewolf grabs him by the head and tears him in half. The older man shoots it with the silver bullet and it's super effective. But Tony starts to change as he was bitten. The old man shoots and kills him. We're suddenly back in the waxwork and Tony has become a permanent fixture in it. Meanwhile, China can't turn down a man, even a wax one, and walks into another dimension. She's welcomed by the man from the waxwork and he tells her to sit as they've been waiting for her. She served a bowl of bloody raw meat, a red sauce is poured over it by a man with really fake facial hair. They all eat it like they've never eaten before in their lives. After dinner, she's shown to her room. The man's son comes in the room and tries to attack her as he's a vampire. China enters a basement and finds a man claiming to be her fiance. His leg has been partially devoured and China thinks this all has to be a game. But the son finds her and he tries to attack her again. She stabs him with a knife, but that has little effect on a vampire. She forms a cross with two knives and places them on his head, which causes it to explode. China grabs a chair leg and now has to fend off the Count's brides. She kills all of them, throwing one of them into some wine bottles and escapes the basement. China runs into the Count, becoming hypnotized by his stare. She offers up her neck and is bitten on the steps. Mark finds Sarah and she's fixated on the Marquis de Sade. It's always the quiet ones. Mark tells her he can't find anyone and wants to get out of here. They meet Hans who says their friends left together earlier. Mark again is jealous, thinking China is with another guy, oblivious to the fact that Sarah has a thing for him. The following day, Mark tells his friends he tried calling Tony and China, but neither returned home. He even went back to the waxwork, but they weren't there either. Later that day, Mark makes a missing persons report. The police don't exactly believe his waxwork story, but need to check it out regardless. They're allowed in by the owner who makes it sound like Mark and his friends broke in as he claims it wasn't even open yet. The detective comes up with nothing and tells Mark to go home. His friends are probably trying to call him. The detective starts having some flashbacks to the waxwork in some of his cases. Something doesn't sit right, so he returns. He sneaks in and goes to the vampire exhibit, crossing beyond the rope and nothing happens. He digs in China's face with a knife, taking a sample with him. Mark brings Sarah to his attic as he believes he's seen the man from the waxwork before. He finds an old news article about the man in the beginning of the film which was his grandfather being murdered and how the prime suspect just happened to be the man from the waxwork. We're back with the detective as he walks straight into an Egyptian exhibit. Music from the old Universal Monster movies plays as the detective opens a crypt. But all this does is awaken an angry mummy. 
It throws the detective in the crypt, sealing him inside. Meanwhile, Mark and Sarah meet with Sir Wilfred, Mark's godfather. They tell him about the waxwork and the man, and Wilfred knows all too much about him. The waxwork is being used to sacrifice people, and once enough are, some of history's worst monsters will be reborn. Mark and Sarah leave to try and stop him, and Wilfred makes a call saying he's been found. It has begun. Mark and Sarah arrive planning on burning down each display themselves. They arrive in the waxwork, and Sarah can't keep her libido in check. Mark looks away for a second, and when he looks back, she's gone. He's then pushed into another one of the exhibits. Sarah is brought into the Marquis de Sade and chained up. She might be a little too into this. Meanwhile, Mark is in a 1960s zombie movie. He tries exiting through a gate but finds there is no escape as a barrier won't let him out. He says none of this is real. If I don't believe in you, then you don't exist and he dives out of the exhibit. He's chased and jumps through the Marquis de Sade exhibit. A man confronts him but he fights him off and takes his pistol. Mark walks in the room, removing Sarah from the shackles, but Sarah doesn't seem to want to leave. Mark tells her it's all in her head and she's being possessed. They can't hurt you if you don't believe. He hands the Marquis the pistol and tells him to shoot. He does, but it goes right through Mark. Mark takes Sarah's hand, but is warned by the Marquis that they will meet again. They escape, but are captured as the man has a contingency plan. Gemma and James, the other friends, are called there by the man, becoming the final two sacrifices needed for the plan. And just like that, all the wax figures start coming to life. Sarah and Mark are completely surrounded with no way out. But just as everything looks bleak, Wilfred and an army of seniors come busting through the door. He hands Mark his grandfather's sword and says they can't let even one of these things out alive. Now it's just all out chaos. A fire is started and the whole place just starts blowing up. Mark hides in a back room where he ambushes the Marquis, but his sword skills aren't quite up to par. They have a one-on-one -on -one duel, but Mark is just no match. Before Marquis can finish him, however, he gets an axe in the back from Sarah. The owner of the waxwork is about to shoot Sarah and Mark when Wilfred arrives shooting him. The man falls down into a tub of molten wax. Unfortunately for Wilfred, he has his head removed by a werewolf. The building is completely in flames as Sarah and Mark escape. They watch as it burns to rubble. But out of that rubble comes the sequel bait. I hope you enjoyed our look at waxwork. If you did, then maybe think about becoming a subscriber as it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.